Welcome to NovaWorks Learning Center. In this video, we will demonstrate how to tag simple financial statements for inline XBRL. We'll discuss the tools for tagging a table and also cover how to set calculations, tag parenthetical information, and mark footnotes. First, let's go over what we mean by a simple financial statement. Simple financial statements have a stub column that contains items that correspond to the U.S. GAAP elements, and one or more data columns that contain data points for those elements for a particular context. The balance sheet, statement of operations, and statement of cash flows are usually simple financial statements. Each of these tables contains a single element on each row of the table, with data columns that correspond to a point in time or a period in time. If you're reporting information for multiple legal entities in a single table, we'll cover how to do that in another tutorial. Each table will first be marked using the Mark Table function. This is the tool that is going to set the element for the presentation as well as the default precision for the facts inside the table. The contents of the table will be tagged using two primary tools. The Row Element tool will mark a row with an element. The Column Context tool will mark a column with a context. Let's go ahead and look at these functions inside GoFiler. Here I have a simple balance sheet for a 10Q, which is again available in the Software Samples folder if you'd like to follow along. The process I'm about to go over is the same for other simple financial statements as well. The first thing we want to do is make sure that our table has been styled the way we want. The XDX engrams for the table will be stored in the table row or TR elements and table cell or TD elements. If you make changes to the structure or format of the table after adding those engrams to the HTML tags, you run the risk of accidentally removing the XDX information from your document. So polish your tables first, add striping, do whatever stylistic effects you want to do before you start XDX tagging. And once you've started tagging, Remember to keep an eye on the Management View window. This window is going to help you quickly see where XDX tagging is present in your table. Let's begin. First, we're going to mark this table as a financial statement. Place the cursor anywhere inside the table. We'll click on the first cell. Go to the XDX Markup ribbon and click the Mark Table button. This dialog sets the presentation information for the table. The table type is Statement because this is one of the face financial statements. Set the type to Statement, Balance Sheet. Enter the name for the presentation. This is the name of the table as it is written in the HTML document. Ours is Condensed Consolidated Balance Sheets. Set the default precision for the facts in this table. You can see our table is in thousands, so we'll set the precision to minus three thousands. And we will set the counted as field to the corresponding value. Counted as refers to how you can edit XBRL fact data inside GoFiler. It is also used to determine the scaling for facts in the table as they are translated to inline XBRL. As a side note, individual facts can have their properties adjusted as well. Click OK to add the engram to the table. You can see here the XDX marker for the engram. Looking in the management view, the presentation engram was added to the table tag in the document. Let's move on. You can do either the rows or the columns next. The order doesn't make any difference as we tag the rest of the table. It's going to be where the row and column engrams intersect that the inline XBRL facts will be created. I'm going to do the columns since I'm already at the first row of the table. Place the cursor in the column in the first row of the table. Context engrams need to be added to the first row. We need to put the cursor on the column that corresponds to the data column. If we have gutter columns, placing the cursor in one of the gutter columns for the data column will also work. If you have spanned headings, you need to add a blank row above the spanned heading. This should be done as part of the process of preparing your HTML document for XDX. Back to adding our contexts. Click Column Context on the XDX Markup ribbon. This opens the Add Column Context dialog, which should look familiar if you've watched the previous tutorials for cover page tagging. We're going to set the context information for the column, which we can determine by looking at the column heading. Our column shows data at March 31, 2019, 
This is an instant context, since it specifies a particular date, so set the type to instant. Then set the date in the date field. You can also use this preset list, if your context is a common date or period. There are no dimensions or member elements to use with this context because it is a simple financial statement. If we were stating information for multiple legal entities or had some other dimensions to our balance sheet, we would add that information here. Click OK. The x to x engram has been added to the first column. You can see that the engram is located inside the table cell, or TD tag, in the management view. Place the cursor in the next column. Click Column Context, and set the context for this column. Click OK. Now we can start with the data rows. Place the cursor in the stub column for the first row. This is the Assets heading on our table. Click Row Element. This dialog sets the element for the row. If possible, the software automatically detects the element to use based on the current presentation and the text in the stub column. Our text was Assets on the first row of the balance sheet, so the software selected the Assets Abstract element for us automatically. Let's double check the indenting, which is set to zero. This means it is at the lowest level in our table, which is what we want. Indenting is used to group elements within an XBRL presentation. For example, it separates asset elements from liability elements and can even further delineate and group various elements. Click OK. We've tagged the first row. The engram is on the table row, or TR tag. Let's tag a few more rows. Place the cursor in the next row. Click Row Element. Enter the element name into the element field. If we don't know the element name, we can search for it by clicking on the button to the right of the element field. The library is automatically searched using the label for the row as keywords. Current assets is pretty vague, but we can filter the list since we know that this is an abstract element with a string data type. Click Search. Here's the Assets Current Abstract element. Click OK. Check the indenting. Current Assets is a child of Assets, so we'll indent at one level. This is also a heading, so we'll check that option. Click OK. Now the next row. Click Row Element. Again, the software selected an element using the text at the cursor location. If this isn't the element you want, choose a new element. For our sample, we'll be using this element for our line item. Check the indent level. This is a child of current assets, so indenting should increase to 2. Click OK. And that's the basic process for manually tagging rows in the table. I'm going to show you another method for tagging that's also pretty fast. Go to the View ribbon. Click the Taxonomy Viewer button. This opens the Taxonomy Viewer in the Management View window. This is basically a portable version of the XBRL element library. The Taxonomy Viewer is tracking the active window, so it picked up that we're using the US GAAP 2019 taxonomy and is displaying that taxonomy in the Management View. Let's explore the taxonomy and locate the balance sheet that corresponds to our accounting method. Expand the Statement of Financial Position Classified item. As we expand these items, you can see the structure of the table. Here's the Assets Abstract element. Below it is Current Assets. I already tagged cash and cash equivalents, as well as the receivables. Our next line item represents inventories. So let's expand the Inventory Net Abstract item. Here's Inventory Net, which is the element I want to use. Just click it and drag it to the row. When you see the light blue highlighting, that means that the software is going to tag that row with the element we're dragging. To complete the drag, release the mouse button. The Add Row Element dialog opened with the element already selected. We can check our options and then click OK. And it's tagged. Find the next element. 
drag it to the row, and release. The dialog opens. All our options are OK. Click OK. And we can just walk down the taxonomy, tagging our table as we go. When we get to the total current assets, make sure to check the total line option. And now when we get to the non-current assets, we need to make sure we set the indent level appropriately. Let's continue tagging the table. The process for these items is the same. The most important thing to remember is to watch those indent levels to make sure the element has an appropriate relationship to the elements around it. As we get down to the disclosures for stockholders' equity, this is where we add parenthetical information. For now, I'm going to tag the underlying table, and we'll show you how to do the parenthetical tagging in Part 2 of this tutorial. So this line item is the preferred stock value. This is the common stock value. You'll note that we have two different types of common stock, Class A common stock and Class B common stock. Both of these line items use the same common stock value element, but the context for these items will be dimensionalized using the statement class of stock axis. So these facts are a special case. Our context for our column doesn't have this dimension on it, and we obviously can't edit the context or we'll apply the dimension to the entire table, which we don't want to do. We're going to tag each of these facts individually. Since the facts are created at an intersection of the column and row engram, we can just not tag this row and instead use a block tag to specify the information for these cells. Not tagging the row with an element means the facts will not be created for that row. The block tagging will create the facts instead. Place the cursor in the first of the data cells. Go to the XDX markup ribbon. Click Block Fact. Set the element to the common stock value element. Set the indenting. Click Next. Set the date of the context to the date of the column. Now add the dimension and member elements.
click Add, and then click Next. And finally, click Finish. Repeat the process for the second column. Now do the same process for the Class B common stock. This time the member element will be Common Class B Member. Click Apply. And then click Next. And finally Finish and then repeat for the second item. Now we can wrap up the rest of the table using the Row Element function or the Taxonomy Viewer window. Once you have a table set up, a template can be created and used on later filings to quickly apply tagging to the majority of the table with one function. This also works across legacy XBRL presentations, provided that the row labels are the same. We'll cover that in a later tutorial. And that concludes Part 1 of the Simple Financial Statement Tutorial. Part 2 will continue with information on how to tag parenthetical data, add calculations, and mark footnotes. Until then, see you later.